Hey guys, I think this is part two of the uh, turntable project. Not quite sure of the sequence. Probably going to take a while altogether, but uh, where we are now, I've got the turntable and motor off. I've taken the uh, support spindle out. I've relieved that a bit further to take a larger ball bearing. Now I think for several reasons I'm going to clad this, get a metal finish. It's got some rough spots, I've got to clean that up and then what we've got here, fortunately, I have a sheet of 24 gauge aluminum, which is almost exactly the right size for one dimension. And uh, I've just got to make a cut, which I shall have to do by hand, I think. I don't want to use a jigsaw on it, I'll have to use just this. Uh, uh, this little old cutter thing, very tedious, but as it's so thin, I think we'll do that. And then make a hole to suit the spindle position. And then I think for simplicity's sake, uh, sandpaper the bottom side, put a load of uh, contact adhesive on both surfaces and just stick the damn thing on. Be better to have this than the wood surface, I think, and then we'll go from there. Incidentally, I meant to say previously, um, whilst by many standards on YouTube my subscriber count is quite modest, but I'm extremely grateful to all the folks who have subscribed. I do appreciate it. I think we're up to nearly 1600, but um, if you can put up with this old man, you'd <laughs> you're doing pretty well. And anyway, as I say, I appreciate it and I uh, hope we can keep building on the channel with one weird project after another. So let's get this cut. Well I've marked up <clears throat> for a hole in the middle and uh, taken a 3 8 3 8 punch through it. So I'm just going to use, this is actually a fair bit larger than I need but I haven't got anything much smaller that's not too small. get it cleaned up and put some adhesive on and probably uh, sand this down, smooth it off. Right, well that's a reasonable fit. Not absolutely perfect but the sheet was actually within fractions of the uh, length and uh, of course once this uh, contact cement grabs there's not much you can do to move it. So that's pretty okay going to put the spindle in and uh, check for clearance. If necessary I'll put another washer at the bottom. So I'll put the turntable So I'll put the turntable on. The ball is already in there holding with a little bit of oil. Now then let's see now we've got clearance. No problem there, so now we'll move on to another stage. Right, I'm going to turn attention to uh, a foot switch and I've got to find something to enclose the motor. I've got a great heavy piece of tube that I might use, but uh, it's a bit heavy. I have to see what I can come up with. Anyway, this is, <laughs> I mean, I say this every darn time. What have I got? What can I use? And I've got some offcuts of wood here. So to make a foot switch, we can rest the foot on this end, apply pressure to this end, and we'll have a spring. Actually set back just a smidgen. And then this, uh, micro switch which has got a nice little roller foot 
we'll fit that onto the end of this top piece and then that's basically the idea but the spring has got to be inlet so I'm going to use this Forstner bit and uh, create a uh, pocket for the spring both ends then I've got a piece of piano hinge we'll cut that off and uh, put that down here so that's the current plan as usual on the fly see what works well we've progressed a little bit here uh, we've used the forcing a bit to uh, capture the spring temporarily I've put the micro switch on the front got a piano hinge here going to fit that and put the spring in and uh, see how it goes from there probably spray a lick of paint over it too that's got the uh, hinge secured there I just pop the spring in place that's a fairly good spring pressure that can go all the way down and the roller foot of the switch takes the strain might put an extra block I haven't tried this with the foot yet actually may put a block here to support the heel and that basically is it crude and simple now I think we'll just put a bit of paint on it and uh, have it looking a bit better might put some rubber feet on the bottom later well, it's just throwing some paint at it I didn't really prep the wood it's just something to cover it up but um, oh what was that it's all right <laughs> that was the uh, spring not quite seating in the pocket I just put it on the floor, checked it with my foot. The pressure is very nice. It's enough resistance, um, but I think I need a heel block back here, so we'll whack one of those on later. But that'll do for now. That's basically the uh, foot switch sorted out. I can't find any uh, rubber feet for this yet, but I will eventually pick some up. But uh, I've just put on this heel block which makes a huge difference the foot my foot sits on it just perfectly so that I think will do the trick nicely probably I could keep my foot on there as long as I wanted although there's quite a bit of spring pressure but uh, I can always change the spring for something a little weaker we're back to the turntable just for a bit I uh, I got this old four jaw chuck incidentally out of interest it's a Sweetland chuck manufactured by hogs something New Haven Connecticut anyway it's a spare four jaw with no back plate um, I shall have to make an extended I haven't got a chuck key for it but I should have to make a nice uh, extended one uh, I've got it uh, mounted to the brass direct I've got two cap screws there going down into I drilled and tapped the turntable so that will give me a fair amount of scope for some work and it's only a matter of moments to take it off so that's another little enhancement and uh, I must get back to the motor aspect I think well I've still got a lot to do but I've just lashed this up so I can uh, check out the foot switch I can rest my foot there pretty conveniently
Now apart from the possibility of introducing speed control, when I get the 5 RPM motor I think I'll probably just about be where I want to be. And I'm still using the same setup for the motor which actually, although it's a sort of lasher, I think um, may well suffice but I've got to make a housing for it. My wires are a bit on the short side so everything's a bit messy and I've got um, <clears throat> I don't know whether that'll be readable won't stay up it's showing showing 12 I'm running off a main supply now I mean, even that as it is wouldn't be too bad because uh, you could work on about an inch or two inch and then advance and carry on but I think we'll have it slower in the end so that's where we've got to for now uh, this ideally let's take the uh, clips off this ideally is going to want a cover housing I can't find a piece of tube or anything that's quite the right size yet <laughs> it'll probably be a can of soup <laughs> or something like that so what we've got left to do is put a housing on here put the other motor in when I get it uh, make a key for this chuck which may be <clears throat> may not be needed all the time of course but um, I think for a lot of applications it'll probably stay put and it'll take a few seconds to remove. So I might call it a day on that and call this part two and uh, I suppose bring in a part three later if I make a lot more change improvements that is. Uh, we'll, have, we'll have better wiring from here which will be clipped to the uh, back of the board and probably have a uh, some sort of distribution box somewhere there to go down to the foot pedal but basically we're fairly well ahead so there we are for now I think we'll call this part two not that I've made a lot of improvement but we're getting there and uh, maybe have a part three sometime later probably quite a bit later it's going to get cold again had the luxury of 60 degrees in here today it's going to be back down to below freezing very very soon sorry the light's bad in this area I didn't add any light it's a bit of a shady corner anyway thanks for watching <laughs>